God wants you to take steps in the direction of his agenda for your life. God has a plan, has a purpose, has an agenda, a script for your life. He has a script for your life. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 5. He said, a body you have prepared for me. Verse 7 says, in the volume of the book, it is written concerning me. I have come to do your will, O God. So there is something, it's a script. There is an agenda. Acts chapter 15 and verse 18. Known to God from eternity are all his works. There is something known from eternity concerning you, known by God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are a child of prophecy. But you see, you can be a child of prophecy and not even know it. You're just living your life by yourself. One day, God came to a young man by the name of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you came out of your mother's womb, I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. And Isaiah 45, God was speaking to Cyrus. He said to him in verse 3, I will give you the treasures of darkness, the hidden riches of secret places, that you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by your name, I am the God of Israel. In the next verse, verse 4, God now said, even though you don't know me, but I already called you. Something, something, an opinion in the mind of God, an agenda in God's mind predated your birth, predated your life in time. You existed before you manifested. You existed in the mind of God. And then in time, God revealed you to the world. At a particular point in time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This was the best time for you to have been born. This was the best time. As far as God's original plan for you is concerned. Don't forget, according to the Bible, that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundations of the world. But at the appropriate time, he was revealed to humanity. 2,000 years ago, we saw the manifestation of what had taken place long before then. So God chose the time of your birth. Glory to God. He chose the place of your birth. They're, they're a child of prophecy. They're a child of destiny. Glory be to Jesus. Acts chapter 17. I'm going to go there. Verse 26. Acts 17 and verse 26. He has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth. Listen to this. And has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwelling. So God chose the time in which you will be manifested to humanity. But you see, you can be all of this and be oblivious. Be oblivious to God's plan, God's agenda for your life. Someone like Samson was totally oblivious to God's plan and agenda for his life. Judges chapter 13, verse 5, the last line, when, they were, when God was speaking to an angel, to his mom, Mrs. Manoah, he said, he shall begin to deliver Israel from the hand of the Philistines. He shall begin to, Samson was sent to be a deliverer. But there was no time in Samson's life that he ever came to an awareness of that fact. Everything Samson did was for himself. Samson was totally oblivious as to God's plan for his life that he was prayed to be, prayed to be born. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Go to the next chapter, chapter 14, verse 3 and verse 4. Judges 14. Death. His father and mother. Let, let's even start from verse, verse 1. That is 14 verse 1. Now Samson went down to Timna and saw a woman in Timna of the daughters of the Philistines. So he went up and told his father and mother saying, I have seen a woman in Timna of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me as a wife. 
The next verse, his father and mother said to him, Is there no woman among the daughters of your brethren or among all my people that you must go and get a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said to his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. Now, see the next verse. But his father and mother did not know that it was of the Lord, that he was seeking an occasion to move against the Philistines. For at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. When you read this scripture, you will think it was God that put a desire for an ungodly woman in the heart of Samson. No. God gave strength to Samson. As far as Samson was concerned, he will use that strength to satisfy his urge. To satisfy whatever it was that he wanted out of life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So what God not did was, well, this man has strength already. The gift and the calling of God, they are irrevocable. Once God has given it, God has given it. Yet God still has a higher purpose that he wants fulfilled. So what God not did was to turn his purpose to a tenant of Samson's desire. God's purpose was squeezing itself into Samson's urge to satisfy himself. Everything Samson did was for himself. Let me tell you this. When God gives you strength, it's for a reason. Joshua chapter 14, we learned last week. Verse 11, verse 12. Caleb was telling Joshua. He said, as, as yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now in verse 14, Caleb now said to Joshua, give me this mountain. Why? Because I'm still strong. I have strength for this mountain. So give it to me. Listen to this. Caleb was a strong 85-year-old man. But it wasn't every of his age mates that was still as strong at 85. Because in Joshua 13, I hope you're following me. Just follow me. In Joshua 13 and verse 1, he had a contemporary by the name of Joshua. The Bible said Joshua advanced in age. He had become an old man. When you look at this verse in the King James Version, somebody said it was tricking in years. He had, become, he had aged at 85. This is what I'm trying to say. Just listen to this. Caleb says, I am strong, so give me the mountain. So when God gives you strength, it's because of the mountain he wants you to take. There are different types of strength. You will have a strength that is commensurate to the mountain God wants to give you. Beauty can be strength. Beauty was strength for Esther because of the mountain God wanted to give Esther. So her beauty was a strength. For Joseph, his, his strength was the ability to interpret dreams. And please understand this. Just because you are strong in one area does not mean everybody is that strong in that area. That was why a colleague of Caleb was already old, even though he was strong. So don't take for granted God strengthening you. Anything that God has resourced you with, don't take it for granted. And whenever God resources you with anything, find out from the one who gave you that strength why he gave it to you. Psalm 80 and verse 17, let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, upon the son of man whom you made strong for yourself, not for himself. 
you make strong for yourself. So God makes you strong for himself, not for yourself. Glory to God. So Samson had strength. But didn't know why. One day his eyes were removed. Judges 16. Listen. You see, God was such an appendix to Samson's life that even when God left, he didn't know. Because even when God was present, it made no difference to him. Judges 16 and verse 20. The Bible said that Samson did not know that God had left him. For some people, when they don't pray, it makes no difference. It makes no difference. If they don't come to church, it makes no difference. They can't tell the difference between when grace is present and when grace is absent. Because they're not living their life based on supernatural equipping. Divine and are you hearing what I'm saying? They are just living their lives. Just living their lives. So they can tell the difference. Their actions are independent of God's influence. But as many as are led by the spirits of God, they are the sons of God. They are the sons of God. Long before Samson lost his eyes, he had lost his vision. Losing his eyes was just a reflection of his spiritual state. When he lost those eyes, it was a reflection of how he was in the realm of the spirit. He was already a man without a vision. A man, Judges 16 and verse 21, they removed his eyes. But long before they took his eyes, he had lost his vision for living. Now God is a God of second chances. He got his eyes back. But the guy never got a sense of vision. Because even after God gave him his eyes back, he got his ear, his strength, he got his strength back. He got his, Judges 16, 22, his ear began to grow again. So he got his strength back, but never got a sense of vision back. So even when God gave him the strength back in Judges 16 and verse 38, you still see the same self-absorbed Samson. Judges 16 and verse 38. Eight. or Judges 16 and verse 28 28 look at it then Samson called to the Lord saying oh Lord God remember me I pray strengthen me I pray just this once oh God that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines not for you but for my eyes Everything Samson did was for himself. And when you live like that, having strength with that vision, one day you will self-destruct. Anything you have with that vision, anything, beauty with that vision, you will sell yourself cheap. Or use that beauty to manipulate people. Intelligence with that vision. You become a con artist. Without knowing why. I didn't get what I'm saying this morning. Anything. So what happened to Samson is what happens to men who God blesses and they don't know why. They don't know why. I don't know why. How are you supposed to leave quickly? Number one. <laughs> Look, don't, let me say it again. Don't take for granted anything that you just woke up to realize God has given to you. Anything. 
some people naturally have a photographic memory, brain. They just realize that when they look at something once, they know it. Do you know that? That's, 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 that's a gift. Some people are just extra handsome. Do you know that? Do you know that? Some people are just exceptionally attractive. They, they didn't make themselves. They just realized that, hey, I'm an attention grabber. Everywhere I go, eyes begin to turn. Everywhere. While some people have to do extra effort to be noticed once. Hello? Meanwhile, some people, as they are going like this, people are having accidents. They didn't make themselves, they just realized he is well. There are different types of intelligence, you know that. For a long time, we thought it was only logis- logical intelligence that existed. But there are different types of intelligence that they found out in early childhood education now. About seven types of intelligence. And only one is logical intelligence. Only one. So you don't have to know mathematics. To be a brilliant person, it may not be your area of giftedness. But please pass it to I used to try to learn how to draw. Even when I take a bottle, it will not be a successful zero. It will be a circle. But some people, we just look at him like this, and they'll be smiling. And the picture will look further than the object, the real person. <laughs> oh, you don't, what are you saying? Why are you doing this? You know what I'm saying, don't you? The same thing with singing. I remember years ago, I was trying to sing. My father said, <coughs> I was still young, I was trying to see from where he was. He said, why is your voice like that of a tadpole? Even till now, when I sing, I have only my key, my key is my key. You can't find it, it's just my key. I make a joyful noise. But some people will take the same song, no music accompaniment, and they will raise their voice. And you can tell this is not fair. Because with all of your own efforts, you get what I'm saying now? Thank God that it is not the sonorousness of the song that God listens to. Because of people like us, he puts in the Bible, make a joyful noise. How many of you, you can make a joyful noise? The same thing with playing instruments. You know that? I know there is effort, but effort is working with skill, with gift, with talent, right? I'm trying to draw, drive home a point that God gives us strength uniquely in different areas. And when God gives you a strength in an area, it is because he wants to use that strength for you to take a mountain for him. For him. Esther, you have come into the kingdom for such a time as this. Some people can sell anything. They can sell sand in the desert. Sell ice water to an Eskimo. And they will convince the person. A very convincing, naturally. But if you have all of that and you don't understand God's why, where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. What is important? Number one, you need to understand that you are a kingdom person. You are a kingdom person. Say to your neighbor, you are a kingdom person. Hallelujah. You're not just a handsome guy, beautiful lady, intelligent person. 
You are a kingdom person. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13. The Bible says we have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness. We have been translated into the kingdom of the son of his love. So you have been translated into a kingdom. Now what kind of kingdom have you been brought into? Exodus 19 and verse 6. A kingdom of priests. The Bible calls this kingdom. A kingdom of priests. You may not know it, but you have been consecrated by God. There is an ordination of God upon your life. A kingdom of priests. Listen, this is why you can't afford to be casual in your approach to living. Because life in itself is spiritual by nature. Life is spiritual. Though we walk in the flesh, we are not fighting against the flesh. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. So you are a priest. Say to your neighbor, the hand of God is upon you. Tell them your approach to life cannot be natural. Cannot be carnal. Say life is spiritual. Hallelujah. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Can I drop this here? Life is spiritual. Moses was raised by God in the palace of Pharaoh. I hope you guys can cut this. He was raised by God in the palace of Pharaoh. So Moses did not have the slave mentality of the average Jewish person. So when he saw an Egyptian, he could face up to an Egyptian. The rest of his brethren couldn't do that. However, all that Moses could learn in the palace of Pharaoh was kingship. With kingship, he could face up to an Egyptian. But kingship is not enough. So God sent him to Jethro, who was a priest of Midian, to learn priesthood from Jethro. So as a king, you can face an Egyptian. As a priest, you can deal with the gods of Egypt. There are times you will make your presentation and you go and do your intercession. After the presentation. Because between your presentation and the confirmation, there can be a diabolical overtone. A, da- a woman says she went to bed in the night with a living child. She woke up with a dead child because in the night, exchange took place. So they can tell you today we are going to give you the job and wake up tomorrow and change their mind. And you can't explain what is going on. A diabolical overtone. Lamentations 3, verse 35 and verse 36 and verse 37. Look at those three verses. To turn aside the right of a man before the face of the Most High. He said to subvert a man in his cause. The Lord approved not. But do you know on a daily basis this is happening? Oh. On a daily basis, judgment is being subverted. You've seen people who are good people. And you can't explain why things are going wrong for them. Nice people, good people. But life does not answer to being good. The devil doesn't play fair. Doesn't play fair. So judgment can be turned back. This is why in Psalm 149, oh, verse 9, Psalm 149, we are coming back to you. Verse 9, Psalm 149. To execute upon them the judgment that is written. So a judgment can be written and not served. Am I in the right shot this morning? 
It's one thing for a, a sentence to be passed. It's another thing for that sentence to be carried out. They can ask for a stay of action. Do you know that? So, a written judgment has to be enforced. And the Bible says, this honor have his sins. So, as a believer, when you look at what is going on, and you see an error, you correct it. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 talks about it. You, you, you are making me to stay around here. I just wish somebody is getting what I'm saying. That in life, at times, your progress may be easy. That other times, you get to a stop, you get to a point, and you can start the resistance. Every attempt to go beyond it is being aborted. And it's not natural. It's not natural. Every attempt to go beyond that point. So it was easy for Elijah and Elijah to go from Gilgal to Bethel. From Bethel to Jericho. But when they got to Jordan, they faced the body of water. They said, thus far you have gone, you will go no further. And to cross that water is not Keno you need, it's Mantu you need. It's Mantu. It's not Keno that will get you to the river. It's a Mantu. Lift up your head so you gates. What are gates in the Bible? What are gates? When it says, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. What are gates in Bible days? Gates represent where the elders sit and decisions are made. So the gates represent the senate, the governing council of a territory. Oh my, thank you. That's the one. Read your Bible very well. In Proverbs 31, Talking about the virtuous woman, her husband will be known among the elders when he sits at the gate. When they were going to decide, I, I believe I came to the right church this morning. I, I'm, I'm trying to weigh what to say to be sure you can understand it and what to. When they were going to decide concerning who will be the husband of Ruth. He was at the gate. It is where decisions are made. So when he says, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. He's simply saying it will be God's will against the will of the enemy. The enemy has decisions he's making concerning the rest of this year. There is a day he's waiting for, but that day will not come. I'm saying don't live casually. Don't live anyhow. Don't go step into your day with that light. You can preempt the enemy. The kingdom of priests. The kingdom of praise. That is why there is no, look, I'm never in a hurry to step out. Everything can wait except the helper. If I can get the helper on my side, I will be the traffic of the day. Through God, you can leap over wall. Where are you hurrying to? Where are you hurrying to? You can't afford to be casual about life. I wish I could spend time to unpack this. The Bible told us in the book of Judges, that was a particular time when a man decided to kill all his brothers. Seventy sons, except one, because that person hid himself. Some of you, you are going through unnecessary troubles because of overexposure of your life. Overexposure of your life. Everybody knows what is going on in your life. 
those who want it and those who hate it. Everybody knows. In the name of Instagram, you put your life in the hand of the enemy. Book of Judges. Judges chapter 9. Verse 5. Want to go? That you are older doesn't mean you are wiser. The youngest son hid himself. The older ones made themselves vulnerable. The enemy goes about like a roaring lion seeking for whom he may devour. But people don't understand these things. So they live anyhow. Anyhow. Didn't you see where God told the letter, go and hide yourself? First Kings chapter 17. Is that not in your Bible? Go there. First Kings 17 from verse 1. A letter the teach back who was, go to verse 3. That, that, that's the, the, the place gone gone. Get the ends and turn the eastward and do what? Only a spiritual person can understand what I'm saying this morning. A natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit. They are foolishness to him, neither can he know them. But they are spiritually disarmed. Even God hit baby Jesus. The son of God was hidden. Be careful of premature exposure. What let us hear that you are a kingdom person and this is a kingdom of priests. So you live your life on God's terms. Remember Psalm 119 and verse 19. You are a stranger upon the earth. You are a new bee upon the earth. You are dealing with an enemy with over 6,000 years experience. So you must leverage the intelligence of the divine. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. Any giant can come down if you follow divine instructions. David faced a giant and he went with a stone and a catapult. When the giant saw him, he understood what was going on. A little boy is coming to face a giant. He's carrying a stick in his hand. He knows something that others don't know. So the giant did not face the boy. The giant cursed the boy. By his gods, because he understood for a little boy to be coming to battle without a weapon, he's not fighting a physical battle. This is a spiritual warfare here. Not every sickness is natural. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. Killing all who are oppressed by the devil. No matter the number of 
treatment you get, that kind of person cannot get better because the root of that sickness is not natural. Are you getting what I'm saying? Doctors are here. They will tell you you are fine when you know you are not fine. They will run all the tests. And when we come to church, in church we make easy download. Do you know that it's like it's like it's like it's like network internet that you can go to some places. I remember you know that place you go to when you want to receive a call, you must climb somewhere. Right? Because the, the signal is poor. But in some other places the bars are full. This is what church stands for. That when you come into God's house, you can hear. You can see. You can make easy download. In fact, when the pastor is talking, as he's talking, you are hearing what he is not saying. What he is not saying. You just came to an atmosphere that is conducive for God to speak and for a man to make a download. That is why in Psalm 73 and verse 17, he said, when I came into the sanctuary, I understood their end. Psalm 77 and verse 13, thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. It's in the sanctuary. I would have to stop there. We're going to pray very briefly. We're going to declare. Show me. You see, because you see, let me tell you this. Do you know you can have strength in an area and you are the last person to know it because it's so much a part of you, you are taking it for granted. You're taking it for granted. It's, it's so natural to you. You have become over familiar with your strength. So you are neglecting the gift of God. You? I mean, God asked Moses, what is in your hand? It's right there in your hand. So God pointed his attention towards a gift that will become a symbol of deliverance. The communication of your faith becomes effectual when you begin to acknowledge every good thing on your inside. Peter says, such as I have. Such as I have. The Holy Ghost is there to guide you into an awareness of such as you have. Job chapter 6 and verse 13. Job 6, 13. It's not my help within me. And his success driven far from me. New King James says his success driven far from me. It's not my help. And the help is within the Spirit of God is here to guide us. Lift your hand where you are. John chapter 16 and verse 13. He said he will guide you into all truth. Open my eyes to the treasures within. Open my eyes to my area of strength. Open my eyes to it. That's the prayer we're praying quickly this morning. Open my eyes to what you have given to me that you want to use to bless the world. 